I'm going to call the regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District to order on October 24, 2019. Roll call. We'll start with Ben Viola. Here. Judith Cavallero. Present. Charles Anderson. Here. Paul Rodriguez. Here. Jason Greenleaf. Here. Joe Carroll has an excused absence. And I'm Chairman Nick Rico. Okay. Approval of the September 26, 2019 regular monthly meeting minutes. Move approval. Second. All right. We have a move, motion, and a second. Any additions, subtractions, corrections? All right, barring none, all in favor? Do I One abstention from Mr. Bywall, thank you. Superintendent's report. A uh, copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of September is included in your packet. Our average effluent flow for the month was 1.38 million gallons a day. Our from quality is well within our permitted limits. We average 93% uh, DOD removal, 96% TSS removal for the month with average F1 concentrations of 23 and 15 milligrams per liter respectively. A copy of the pump station flows for the month of September is also included in your packet. There are a couple of anomalies with the causes noted, um, nothing too unusual. Uh, Carl, Paul, Phil, and Rudy, and John have uh, just completed the installation of the new generator, pump station 16. It's now online and um, actually got a workout with the power outage. Uh, the generator has been uh, started up by Kohler and the startup went fine. Work remaining is modifying the existing plenum and replacing some of the siding on the side of the building. Construction is now complete for the replacement of control panel 4, 7, 4 and 7. They've now been combined into just one. Uh, this was a very big job, uh, went very well, and I just want to express some thanks to William Curran and Millican Brothers. Um, they need to be commended on this work. It was uh, well done on all parts. On October 2nd, I met with representatives for Bailey Quality Seafood in Mad Height from DEP. Um, to discuss connecting uh, 21 South Canning Road to the sewer. Currently, they maintain an overboard discharge license uh, that DEP would like to eliminate. Uh, both Bailey Quality Seafood and DEP are evaluating uh, the option of connecting to the sewer. Uh, we have received our new discharge permit license. It's, uh, we now have a copy of it in hand. Uh, if anyone would like a copy of it, I would, would provide it. Uh, the October 17th Nor'easter, we had a very busy night. Um, we had uh, 15 <coughs> pump stations plus the, plus the treatment plant was on generator power. Um, we had minimum issues, but we did have one generator fail down at pump station number eight, which was a, uh, down at Black Point Road. Um, and that failed during the second night. We were able to uh, borrow the town's portable generator and get that back up and running that day. Uh, I had to work with emergency management um, team in order to uh, expedite getting the plant back online. Even though we have generator power, I'd like to get back onto commercial power as quickly as possible. Um, we had a kickoff meeting with uh, Hoyle Tanner Associates to asset management uh, project and they've already done an inventory within the, the plant. They worked on that this week. Uh, just a reminder, our regular monthly meetings for the next two months are held on the third week of the month versus the uh, uh, third Thursday of the month uh, instead of the fourth Thursday as uh, is typical. Uh, November meeting is November 21st. Our December meeting is on the 19th. Just prior to our next regular monthly meeting on the 21st, um, we will hold our budget workshop starting at 6.30 p.m. And I have one last thing to add. Uh, this, this past week, as we came off the out of the storm and the emergency power, we ended up having a TSS violation at the treatment plant, which the first uh, effluent quality violation we've had in, I believe, six years. So we notified DEP and um, 
not sure of the cause of the, the violation. We, the, uh, going into the weekend and over the weekend, uh, according to our on-call operator, the plant looked and was operating perfectly fine. And Monday morning, we came in and had um, the violation. And we really didn't change anything. And the plant's back up and running perfectly fine. So that's what I have for the operations Cool. Any questions for the superintendent? Yes, please. Well, Charlie. I oh, think Charlie. Go ahead. Um, yeah, well, regarding 21 Snow Canning Road, um, you've met and worked on the details of that. Is that uh, my recollection from years ago was there was a pretreatment going to be a pretreatment requirement on that facility prior to discharge? Have you have you looked into that to evaluate the waste stream? There would have to be a pretreatment requirement on that facility if, okay. uh, if they wanted to do what they are currently doing. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, also, congratulations on the new discharge permit. And I would have to think that the ease with which that was issued is a reflection on the positive, uh, positive experiences that they've had in working with us and inspecting our facility month after month and year after year. But congratulations on thank, that. Thank you. Um, having to borrow the portable generator from the town and having purchased one of our portable generators when it was declared surplus in years past, uh, do we need a portable generator for when these events happen? Sometimes it may not be so easy to get one uh, in an event like this. Yeah. Um, we have so many generators of various sizes, we'd have to have, the portable generator have to be fairly large. We would not be able to have one for the plant and some of the major stations. For a station like this, um, being able to utilize a portable gen generator was a convenience. If we couldn't, we would have to haul using separate haulers. It would be very easy to manage. So we could. Yeah. We could go down that, that road. It's something that we might want to consider and talk about some more. Well, I just think it might be something to think about for dealing with widespread power failures, you know. I mean, when we started, we had no generators. We used to do a Chinese fire drill with portable generator, and then we had two. Then we finally equipped all of our stations with emergency generation, but, um, you know, having one that was sized to handle the majority of the facilities might be, I think it would be worth thinking about. Okay. And I was curious about who the lead person is from Hoyle Tanner or lead people that they've got on our project. A uh, gentleman by the name of Dan Marks and uh, Rachel. I can't think of her last name. Okay. So. Okay. Just curious. Thank you. All right. Any more questions? Just a question uh, regarding 21 Snows Canning Road. That is uh, the entire facility there, right? That so is correct. Bailey's was the only portion of that that had a direct discharge yeah, situation the 20, Yeah, uh, Bailey's has, uh, it's kind of a unique situation. They have a septic system, and then on their processing facility, they have an overboard discharge. Okay. And so for the domestic waste, they have a septic system. Uh, if they were going to connect, they would connect the entire facility. So considering Ready Seafood is moved or is moving? Their operations has moved to Saco at this point. They have. Yes. Okay. So I just, and it may be completely, uh, completely a separate issue, but so Ready Seafood's gone. We had some issues that we pointed to in that direction, made some changes there due mm -hmm. to odor control problems. Um, now we're going to be introducing a new seafood company in the I, world. frankly, I'll be surprised if this actually moves forward. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Now, what other facilities are down there in that business area? There, uh, well, along Snow's Canning Road, mm -hmm. um, on, there are two urchin processors that process um, seasonally. Okay. Uh, that's actually down, but uh, since 
myself being on board here, I believe there used to be six. Um, and those processing is uh, slowly phasing out. And then the uh, majority of the operation within Snow's Canning is uh, a grow facility for cannabis. Okay. And I know you had mentioned in some discussions about uh, recent odors down there, and uh, you had taken a drive with Matt, and mm -hmm. you had noticed an odor from the, the grow facility, or what you felt was the grow facility. Are they, what, what level are they discharging? Very little, actually. They, their, their discharge is um, it's actually something that we're uh, looking at right now. Um, <clears throat> although they are a high user of water, a lot of it is uh, goes off in respiration um, from the growing of the facility, and so uh, they're looking into possibly uh, metering uh, their effluent flow into the sewer system. Their flow from from the, from that facility is down by an excessive amount. Okay. And are, are, have we monitored that? At we all? monitor it all the time. We monitor it all yeah, the time. Yeah. For influent, affluent as well. So they're affluent. We're monitoring for. Yes. Yeah. We monitor their affluent. We we test it quarterly. Okay. I've I've heard several people that have commented on driving in that area, and there was a distinct odor, and having our odor issues that we've had and dealt with, and we've definitely made improvements. I just worry that we're going to get the blame for things that are airborne and not necessarily being yeah. introduced into our system. Yeah, I, Matt and I actually happened to be down there. We were obviously down there on the, the second, but we were down there the week prior after our, um, uh, for our uh, uh, biannual uh, um, inspection that he performs. Mm -hmm. That He was there also down at the police station on... I believe it was the 20th. Yep, uh, September 20th. He was also down on Snow Scanning Road. Uh, that was a result of the odor complaint that we received in, in that area. Uh, so he came down, did his inspection, and he also went down to Snow Scanning and inspected it. So then on, on the second, he was also down there. And both times he was down there, he didn't, he didn't notice any odors mm -hmm. from the sewer. Uh, taking place, and both times we were able to, we both detected odors from the, uh, the cannabis facility. Which were airborne, right? Nothing yeah. emanating from our system. All right. Thank you. Cool. Anything else for the superintendent? Okie dokie. Correspondence. Um, on the 21st, uh, the district will conduct a uh, public hearing with regard to the, our proposed rate increase. I've attached a letter that I, um, announcing that public hearing that included the proposed changes, and we mailed this to each of our users. Uh, this letter was also published in the Portland Press Herald on the 20th of October, and a copy of the letter is also posted on our uh, webpage. Uh, next item, the Downs long-term permit from Rural Palmer. Uh, I provided, they, they requested an ability to serve letter for the long-term facility and I, I provided that document. And the final piece of correspondence I have is our inspection report, which I forwarded on to you separately, because I received it after the packets went out. Uh, and that was the uh, inspection report from Matt Height uh, that he conducted out of a facility on the 20th, and um, the inspection went extremely well, and his observations, I'll quote it, is operation and maintenance at this facility are excellent. Any questions about the correspondence? I, I had a comment on Matt's inspection report. He, he sums it up with an excellent plan, <laughs> but he gives us all satisfied. Well, he gave us one excellent. I one think. excellent. That, that's that's Matt. So it just doesn't seem to be consistent. But anyway. he's a tough grader. Tough grader. He sees excellence at Scarborough as the bar, and you have to go beyond that to really wow him to give you an E. Actually, we got two excellent. Two. Yeah, the first and the 
and the buildings and grounds and then laboratory. All right. Yeah, it, we used to get excellence on our reports commonly before Matt was our inspector and when he came on board, uh, excellent was kind of dropped from his from his uh, lexicon on the on the sheets. So when we get it when we get an E from him, I guess that's you know, super above. I was impressed with the report and that they have, he has added pictures to it. And he That's has linked, linked yeah, the pictures, pictures. There's a lot of pictures linked yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Incidentally, Dave, he'll be handling your performance review this year. This year. <laughs> <laughs> but in a lot of ways, those pictures spoke for themselves. I, yes. thought, I thought it was uh, no, pretty impressive what, what they showed. And certainly not what the average person thinks they're going to see in a wastewater treatment facility. Um, just one, one comment, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Um, just following up on the proposed rate increase letter. Um, won't be here for that public hearing, um, but happy that it's going forward. I just thought um, to be sure to remind the superintendent that um, Folks may, during the public hearing, be questioning us about the uh, the small annual jumps that we that we came to the conclusion to propose, mm -hmm. and that we ought to be prepared to answer the question: What if you did this in periodic larger jumps? The way we as we looked at a whole option of doing it that way, and I just would think it would be a good idea to have that in your back pocket to be able to answer those questions. So. At the public hearing, mm -hmm. should they should they be generated? I wish I was going to be. Here. Uh, just a question on the appendix C with schedule of rates. I'm not, I should know this, but I'm not sure. Holding water. What what is holding water? Um, it would be like a uh, RV cleaning if. Uh, it's huge holding tanks. Yeah, sewage so holding tanks. Holding, okay. Yeah, it's not. It hasn't been held in a tank for two, three years before it gets pumped off, and it, it's it's all of the material, both liquids and solids. Okay. Thank you. Um, any more questions about correspondence? All right, old business, Scarborough Downs, Phase Two, Innovation District. Um, excuse me, um, on behalf of Cross Hole, Crossroads Holding LLC, the Scarborough uh, Downs Development Team is requesting the Sanitary District Board of Trustees to amend its approval of the Innovation District specifically with regard to phasing, capacity reserve fees, and easements. Uh, the Innovation District was originally approved on May 23, 2019. The original approval was for 55 lots and a total flow of approximately 43,000 gallons per day. As noted in their letter, they would like to uh, break the project up into phases, reduce the sewer allocation per lot, to 160 gallons per day and get confirmation of district acceptance of sewers within the proposed right of ways. Uh, I, although I recommended uh, approval of this amendment with, uh, with the following conditions, I'll, I'll discuss that. Uh, it is, um, and I did forward to uh, Ben, a copy of the, our, our ordinances that um, with regards to the acceptance of sewers in uh, private ways, uh, it's it's up to the board. Uh, these these will not be public roads; they will be private. Uh, the the water and sewer in those uh, the water and the uh, other utilities will be owned by the utility, uh, and they will hold an easement. Um, this would be setting a precedence for the the, the, uh, the board for to take in ownership of inf uh, infrastructure within private right-of-ways uh, that really are just servicing that private right-of-way. Um, so uh, moving on, um, uh, 
with regards to my recommendation, the, the May 23rd, 2019 approval, the terms of that uh, shall remain in effect except as noted. Uh, the project can be phased in the requested three phase. Permits and fees shall be executed by phase. Uh, the approved wastewater flow for each lot uh, shall be 160 gallons per day. Any flows in excess of this approval is subject to additional approvals and fees. I do want to speak towards that for a minute. Uh, the original approval had a much higher flow and it's summarized in their letter. That was really the, uh, established for, with regard to uh, sizing of the pump station to make sure it was sufficiently sized. And as the projects come forward, we have actually uh, one, of, one of them on, on the agenda tonight. Uh, they'll be requesting uh, formal for each one of those. Um, the capacity reserve fee for each phase shall be based on the number of lots uh, for the phase and 160 gallon per day per lot. Uh, the current capacity reserve fee is 1646. Uh, and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR index. Uh, based on the current ENR index and 18 lots uh, for phase one, the total capacity reserve fee for phase one would be $47,404.80. The capacity reserve fee is due prior to issuance of the permits and then pending district uh, le uh, legal review and acceptance of the proposed easement language the district review and acceptance of the proposed sewers, uh, the Scarborough Sanitary District will accept the sewers within the proposed right of ways as dif district in infrastructure. I do know the, uh, the, uh, uh, the client, uh, client, the uh, owner, applicant is in the, uh, the audience here, and I don't know if you had anything that you'd like to say at this moment. Um, before he comes to the podium, is there a motion so we can discuss it? Uh, I would move approval of the superintendent's uh, recommendation um, with his conditions included. Second. Okay. Now, we'll invite him. Please introduce yourself. And Good evening. Uh, Rocky Rispera, Crossroads Holdings. Um, just wanted to state that, uh, you know, what we're trying to do is just simplify and, and uh, make it a little easier to get the project going. Um, as the uh, trustees know that each project will come to the trustees for approval. Um, so what we're asking to do is basically buy a certain amount per lot to start with and then if the users come forward and they're more than, they need more than that, then they'll have to buy that at that, that point in time. It just seems procedurally the, the best way to go. And then to phase it is important to us uh, because we've got phase one going now um, we'll roll into phase two, phase three. We, and if we could pay as we go on the, on those phases, it would make it a lot uh, a lot easier to get the project going. In regards to the um, the um, sewer mains in the private ways, uh, we think that's pretty important. We did get the Portland Water District to agree to do that. We've got uh, what I feel are high value users for the town of Scarborough that that will be. Uh, along those private ways, and I think it only makes sense for the for the uh, sanitary district to own those uh, main lines, uh, and then the the uh, they, they'd be in a private way, but we'd have it set up that if the you know if it ever needs repair, if the district needs to do do something, it's it's a simple fix, trench patch, uh, not really responsible for anything more than than that. So we think it's the right way to do it. Again, we got uh, Pullman Water District to go along with it, and we were hoping that we get you folks to agree to it too. So happy to answer questions. I have uh, Dan with me as well if, uh, if need be. Any questions for Rock? Uh, I just have, I have one, um, I guess, clarification on the wastewater flows. Um, it's uh, one, it's, it's in excess, it's not, if there's less. So this is basically establishing a minimum. Yes. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm curious, just to have it on the record, why aren't these roads public? We, with the project, we tried to build flexibility in um, with these, these private ways. So we've set the project up. Um, the lots are all roughly an acre in size and they're kind of modular, they're, they're square shaped. 
Um, we've got a plan here to show you, but so these these private ways are set up so that if we get a user, you know, we might have the private ways typically have six lots on them. Well, we might have six users, and so there'll be a private way, and there would be a main to serve all six unit users. But we may get somebody that comes in that needs more space than that, that wants to build one building, maybe put two or three or four lots together, and so there wouldn't be a private way. We would would be able to eliminate that. So if we set if we if we dedicated these as public ways to start with, we'd be kind of locked into that as soon as we start to sell lots. Is the main road that accesses those pipe stems, the ones that come off, is that public? Or That's private? a public way. That's a public way. So the only thing you're asking our permission for, for taking over public utilities and private way, are in the side streets, the laterals, essentially. Correct. Okay. And those will get built as the project moves forward. So as we have users that we come forward, we'll know whether we're going to actually build that and put a main in, or whether we wind up with just one user and it simply needs a okay. service. Okay. And as I discussed this project in advance with the superintendent, uh, he indicated to me that part of that sewer system toward the tail end of the public road needs to be private pump stations, yes? That's correct. Okay, and that public utility would include not only the gravity line down the main road, but there is a portion in the main road that will be a common force main. Correct. Okay. Anyone else questions, comments? Yeah, I'm, I'm just a little confused about the private pump stations at the what I guess is the terminus of the of the public way that's shown on that plan. Can you show me where on that plan the pressure sewers would be located or the pump stations would be located? Yeah. The pressure sewers are the last section here. I think it's, help me out Dan, it's up to here. Right? I think it's just that. It's just this section. So, so this would be a pressure sewer. The, the end of the project is a pressure sewer. And so the eight lots are, how many lots are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like 10 lots in there. That would be each lot provided with its own pressure sewer system? Correct. We're planning on an E1 type system. Yep. Again, you know, we don't know whether they'll all get built out as eight or 10 lots, lots or whether they'll be combined. And and, could be two be, lots. Uh, could be a couple of lots. So what you're going to have is you're going to have, I didn't study these plants, so you're going to have a uh, common force main down those proposed rights of way, and each unit's going to pump into those force mains, or are they going to each have the individual discharge line? It would be a common line. It would be a pressure sewer where each is pumping into the same line. In the main drag. Mm -hmm. But what about the back lots away from the main line? I believe it's planned to be that's, that's in the private ways as well. That'd be a one, one common sewer. Yeah. One common line. I can't describe my question. So, lot 41, lot 42, lot 43, lot 44, lot 45, they would, they would all pump into... No, there's a line in each private way. And you're only asking us to take the common force mains in the side lateral streets and the public right of way. Correct. All right. I just want to clarify that. The project, the project approval right now is just for the main line road and including the pressure sewer. Okay, so this is not approval for all the side streets yet, or is it? That's what they're looking for confirmation that the district will take approval. Uh, would be uh, confirmation that we would uh, consider or actually accept them. Accept them as they move forward, and and um, so those pressure lines that are running to serve those back lots, you're asking the district to accept those? So they would be the same, you know, the same line as what's going in the public way. Yeah. 
we're thinking of them as the same as a, as a main. And those, and those lines are going to be in private rights of way. Correct. This portion would be private right of way. Right. So why doesn't it make sense for those to be owned and maintained by the individual lot owners since there's only one person discharging into each one of those lots? Like lot 41 or lot 42, why wouldn't it make sense for those lines to be private, owned and operated and maintained by them until they get to the main, the, the pressure line in the main, in the main road? I guess it could be done either way. We think there's a value to the town, and we think there's a value to the buyers here if the, if the district only maintained the entire sewer system other than the pump system. Um, and that's why we're asking the, the, the trustees to, to allow this, this to happen. So it's similar to, if you think about, I'm thinking about the, the residential subdivision we did off, off uh, Howard Avenue, where that's a pressure system. We've got um, pressure lines in the street. Now, again, that's a public way, but the, each house feeds into it. Um, this is a similar situation, but we do have some uh, pressure pipes that's in, in a private way. Similar to what we've talked about with, with the mains, uh, eight inch main in a, in a private way. Well, we have some rules about pressure sewers, mm -hmm. which I guess I haven't, I'm, I'm not totally brushed up on those. Mm -hmm. But what, what are the, what are the, are the provisions in those at the discretion of the board? Is that the way those were written, or? Uh, to, to accept the, pre uh, pressure. to accept the pressure sewer as as public. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. I believe uh, I'd have to. I'd have to. I don't want to miss, misquote. Okay. Misquote. Um, what should they? And, and I'm just curious. What is? What's your um, hesitance? Well, I mean, we maintain as minimal a staff as possible, mm -hmm. and. A pressure sewer serving an individual parcel, basically, in my mind, is something that if it's stopped up or blocked or whatever, it would seem to me that the owners of those properties would be responsible for calling their own service people or calling this bearer of construction to come out and find the source of the problem and clear it up. And the more we accept private pressure lines, the more demand we're going to be putting on our own staff for maintenance in the road, down the road. And it's kind of hard to crystal ball how many people are going to come to us and ask for more and more of these pressure lines. Mm -hmm. And in general, I think it's a good idea for the district not to own them. So, uh, I mean, I don't like the idea of gravity sewers the district is responsible to own and maintain in private rights of way. And our policy has been to minimize that to the extent possible, and um, the majority, I think, of the lines that we might own that aren't in public ways are in easements that we had to that we had to purchase for the installation of our basic components of our system. Mm -hmm. But as development happens on the periphery, I think we can expect more and more. Um, non-typical sewer systems, so non or pressure sewer systems, and other th other than pure gravity systems, to be proposed to us. And if we have a history of uh, or a policy of accept accepting those, then we're basically going to be building in future uh, expense and and in maintenance and maintenance requirements that are kind of hard to perform if and when you need them. And when a pressure sewer is backed up, it's it's pretty hard to find the general location of it other and, than and guesstimating. Not as easily maintained with the equipment we have. Yeah, I mean we can't we can't jet that line. We no. can't pick a it's it's probably a three inch line or a two inch line. Sure. So I mean just the yeah, whole sure. mechanics of the whole mechanics of cleaning it and locating a plug are different. I think I know I I had occasion once to go out to uh, 
Pain Road, where we had a pressure sewer in the public way, the terminus of our gravity line heading towards the South Portland line. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, we had maybe 1,500 feet of pressure sewer. It was, it was plugged up. And, uh, you know, finding that was a challenge, a real challenge. And we tried to pressure, you know, we tried to just pressurize the line and blow the, and blow the uh, blockage out, and the pipes just parted. You know, it was such a firm block that the pressure just made the pipes come apart, so we had to stop that. And then, then we had to find it, cut the section out, and, and, it. and the way we found it was just looking at the, at the plans and saying, okay, if I was a grease plug, where, was it, where do we think it would happen? And we went there and we cut it out, and lo and behold, that's where that's it was. Where it but if it wasn't there, we had no, we, you know, we had and no way. When you said blow it out, you, did we use high pressure water or no, a compressor? Did. Yeah, we used a compressor. Huh. So, I mean, there's just different kinds of problems that could require a lot of time. So, I think to the extent that they could remain privately owned and maintained, that it would be prudent, prudent for, for the district from our perspective to do that, but still to maintain a workable system that the that the developers can can use and make and make work. I mean I, I'm sympathetic with the whole thing about having to join lots together so that you know you have six lots. I think I think it's a smart way to lay it out, but if somebody wanted all six lots for their building site, then you then you would eliminate that private way mm -hmm. and they'd have a I don't know if were they half acre or acre lots. I can't tell, but okay. So they'd have a six acre site to build on, mm -hmm. and all they'd have is a private sewer service from their building to the street. Mm. So I get that. I just I'm just uncomfortable with with the public sewers and the private right of ways because I you know these will probably be maintained just fine. I don't think there's a you know with the with the right of, with the right of ways being maintained and the access in and out. I, I just, I hate to think that we were going to get into sparring matches in the future with property owners who are unhappy with our maintenance of the of our gravity lines that service their buildings, and they could be really low flow places or they could be high volume places. But um, I, there just are some problems that are sort of unique to a the pressure sewer part of it and b the the issue of us embarking on a policy that says we'll allow public sewers and private right, right of ways everywhere. I mean, I don't know. I know what the policy is going to be, but I just think we need to really be careful moving forward that that's not widespread. The widespread. Well, maybe the trustees will decide it is, but up till now, we've we've felt as a board historically that that's not in the interest of, of the district to do that, and we've been able to work with folks so that that's workable. So, with regards to ownership of the uh, of the uh, pressure sewers, the, the, uh, the policy is silent, um, and how we remove it. it used to be that we, uh, like the district required pressure sewers to be located in the basement outside of the public right mm -hmm. away, and it have migrated to accepting the actual pressure main within the public right away. But it doesn't stay. So, uh, I think that's my that's my piece. I certainly think I don't want to do anything that would make it difficult for this project to move forward. Um, and if there's a way, if there's a way to resolve it, or if there's a policy decision, or, or we can make this on some kind of a limited limited basis, so that we didn't just assure everybody that when they come forward that it's going to be universal universally applied. Uh, I guess I'd be okay with something like that. So, Rocky, could you explain to me again the limitation that would be extended to you if you were to keep those private ways and private sewers? Uh, just that we would need to be making a commitment uh, that we that we hadn't planned on. Um, and again, with the unknown of how it's actually going to get built, we were just looking for that, that flexibility uh, to be able to you know, have, the, have the trustees could, own it. Uh, 
Could you convert those private ways to public ways? For example, if the first one in on the north was sold as individual lots, the way you've got them laid out there, would would you then um, be able to dedicate that as a public way? I don't think we could with the with the conversations we've had with the planning board. They probably would not easily be converted. Right. I'm just thinking about we have you know we haven't got a hammerhead on the end. We haven't got uh, those types of things planned out. We're really thinking of those private ways uh, as as access and driveway to uh, multiple users. Um, it won't really feel so much like a street with curb cuts and sidewalks and curbing and, and whatnot. It'll it'll be more driveway shared, more driveway, more shared use. Um, so, I mean, it does it does make it it make it difficult. We thought it was cleaner. Um, you know, if the if the trustees would own all of the all of the sewer there, the downs has has been a challenge. There's a lot of a lot of new ground being plowed and a lot of things that. Oh wait a minute! We don't do it that way, or we haven't done it that way, and we've worked with the town on many uh, instances, uh, and with the water district and with the gas company uh, to figure out ways that you know, gee, we don't usually do it that way, but this, there are reasons why we we need to do it that way or should do it that way. So um, I'm not surprised at your hesitation, uh, but I I think that this this could work. It wouldn't be a big burden. Uh, to the sanitary district, and, and I think we've got a lot of value we're bringing to the town with the project. Uh, and so, uh, my appeal to you would be to, to uh, hopefully agree to work with us on this, and uh, let's come up with some policies that can work. And, and maybe it is just for the downs, or maybe it's just for this certain type of situation where it's a commercial use. And forgive me, remind me what size gravity lines are going up those laterals? Are they eight inch? <laughs> I believe they were all eight inch. We didn't bring the engineer with us tonight. So. Yeah, the, uh -huh. the, uh, the mains going up or eight inch? Yeah. yeah, I'm sure of that. All right, the side mains, the side lateral mains will be mm -hmm. eight inch diameter. So right now what, what our plan is is just stub an eight inch line in. Mm -hmm. And then as we figure out what the users are, you know, if there are more than one user, eight inch line continues on. If somebody comes in and buys them all, then we just need a service. Yep. So it gives us that flexibility. Charlie, would you be more comfortable if we took over the gravity line only on those side lines and not the pressure force main on the last four? Yes, I would, sure. I, I mean, go ahead. <clears throat> well, I, it's, not, it's not so much this one project. I mean, you can lay this out perfectly, but then it opens the door for other developments that come in and say, well, you've accepted. Yes, the precedence. Yes. And we've had a number in the past that have come in that wanted to do that, and we've always held to the standard of no. We, we just, it, if you want us to take over the line, it's got to be in a public uh, public street. And that's that's the <clears throat> that's the way I would like to keep it. But so the main road running down through is going to be public, 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 and it's just the side lines which may only be one, like you said, one owner on some of those streets. So it, it's not a lot. And those are two inch lines coming, or are they eight inch out in the street on those, those fingers that come off? The, the main so on the, on the private ways, right now on the, on the first section where it's all gravity, it's planned to be an eight inch main get extended in there. That's the main road running down through. So the main road running down through is an eight inch main. Okay. And then the, the private ways in the upper part where the gravity sewer is are planned to be eight inch, uh, eight inch gravity mains. I, I guess I don't know, upper part means the longer roads at the beginning. So, get the mic. So what I'm talking about is, there's a, there's a eight inch main that runs all the way up through the public way. Yeah. So these two roads, public way. Then these uh, side pieces are the private ways. This back part of the property would be the pressure area. The rest of this is all gravity. So the plan would be to stub an eight inch main in and then in this instance we know we know who our users here are. We know this will get built as a private way and we would intend to run an eight inch main in. The next piece, we don't know who our users are, but if we have one user that comes in and buys all the lots, 
we probably won't build that private way. So then that would just be a service off the main, off the, off the public main, out of the public street. So it just allows us flexibility. But if you, build build them, if you build them, there'll be eight inch gravity mains. If we build them, there'll be eight inch gravity mains, except for down here where it's pressure sewer, and that would be, I believe, a two inch two pressure inch. line. So there'd be two inch pressure line in the, main, in the public way, and there'd be two inch pressure line in however much private way we need. And all of those are going to be gravity, uh, positive displacement pumps in those, These in those pressure sewer lines. Ones. So we're, sh we're showing you a lot of lots right now. I don't think it, ultimately it'll get built out that way. I think lots will get put together. Because these, these one acre lots will allow between a 10 and 20,000 square foot building to be built. It all depends on your parking needs, your ratios. So if we have somebody that comes in and needs to build bigger than 20,000, we gotta put a couple of lots together. If we have a 50 or 60,000, we've gotta put a handful of lots together to make it work. So, and we're talking to those types of users now. So we, we've tried to set it up so that you know, it could be as small as an acre, but then they can get put together. And these, Rocky is describing these private drives, they are, I mean, there's gonna be kind of wider curb cuts and things like that, but they're gonna look and feel pretty close to a street. I mean, they're gonna be 24 feet wide like a, the public requires for a, a road width. Yeah, but they're gonna have a truck. It's gonna be curved, it's gonna be good access. Um, you know, we talked about the other utilities, or the public utilities would be within them. So it's it's going to look more like a public street, but it's going to be more light industrial because there's more. Mm -hmm. We're working on curb cuts with Nancy, um, but it's going to be more maybe integrated with each site. But it's going to look and feel like a street. So when they're built, but a big piece of this is they may or may not be built. Correct. That's right. the correct. But and, if they're and, built, okay. I was going to say if they're built to be built to town standards. They virtually meet town standards, but they won't have a turnaround on the end, and they won't, they won't, oh, they won't be accepted by the town. So the town wasn't willing. The town wasn't willing to make the concession of being willing to accept those as public ways. Never asked them because the because the turnarounds aren't there. We we never asked them. We didn't. We just didn't think it would be it was important or, or needed. Yeah. Uh, again, feel we didn't want to designate these as public ways, I and mean, once it's designated as a public way, we can't. Change that. No, I get that. I think uh, from your side, that makes total sense yeah. to do Just it. To, to do it that flexibility way. into to meet uh, you know meet demand. So. I so. think you said that the district would benefit from this. And what are the benefits to the district for accepting the roads on private ways? I, just, I think the town benefits. I'm yeah. not saying the, the, not the district the benefits directly, um, but the town benefits certainly from this this uh, light industrial project brings a lot of value to them yeah the real concern I have is not with this project itself but just the concept that now we're going to accept sewers other than public ways and we just haven't done that we've had a number since I've been on the board there have been a number of developers that have come through and wanted to do that and had different ideas and we've just always it's always been a flat no I you know so I'm just that's the part I'm having trouble with. <laughs> I, I, I've been here and asked you to do that before, <laughs> but the situation yeah. was when I was putting a private pump station in, you know, in a, a public street with a private pump station, and you wound up putting the, you know, the pump I think, lines I think you, had, the, you didn't have any gray hair when you were here. <laughs> <laughs> I stood in front of you folks uh, more than once. That's uh, so, I, it, I mean, if I may, Mr. Yes, Chairman, I think, I mean, I think, I'm pretty much persuaded that this is a pretty unique development scenario with um, crossroads, crossroads holding in partnership with the town to, to develop this, this way. And maybe that's the way I could view this as um, a way to use that to, to justify deviating from what our past practice has been is that, is that the town places a high value on the accomplishment of the development out there more so than they typically would be. Typically they're pretty neutral about any type of 
development in the community, but this is maybe moving as, I guess I wouldn't really call it a partnership uh, in terms of the business sense, but certainly the town's been cooperating greatly with Crossroads Holding to make, help to make this happen. And I guess on that basis, I, I could be convinced that, you know, maybe that's not an unreasonable thing for us to do in this unique occasion is to view this as a unique circumstance and not view it as precedent setting for every other project that's going to come down the road. I think, Mr. Chair, I, I think we need to make a policy as to how we're going to continue doing this. I think I agree that, you know, other builders are going to come in and want to do the same thing. And I think we need to make a hard and fast policy. We can't do that tonight, obviously. No. I would suggest that we do that maybe as a result of a workshop mm -hmm. and a longer discussion. Um, but for the motion that we have on the floor now, what I'm hearing is it sounds like we're all okay with accepting the sewer and the public right of way because it's going to be built to the specs and it's going to be business as usual. It's those side streets with, in my opinion, the one I have trouble with, are the sidelines that are two-inch force mains. <clears throat> um, I'm okay with the eight-inch diameter pipelines. We manage those all the time. It's the, the, the two-inch force mains and the private right-of-way. It's the combination of the two that gives me the heartache. And the water district, <clears throat> uh, I'll just think of this through my head, the water district really has no limitation. They're not facing, Rocky mentioned that the water district has accepted this, uh, but they're not facing some of the issues that we might be facing. It's big, got same infrastructure everywhere as they would anywhere else, correct? I think so. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so if, if the precious sewers running north and south off the main line were maintained as private, then I think what I'm hearing is the board's okay with the rest of it. Uh, that's the way I look at it. And I think that okay. pace, passes the straight face test with respect to what we've done before. And that's the pay, public, it's all public, in public, right? It's all in public and that we would now, my question to you is, would we accept the gravity lines in the private right away? I don't have a problem with that. Well, I guess after talking it all out, again, I, I'm thinking that because of the unique nature of this project, um, I, I would be willing to, to do that. But if somebody came to me, they won't because I'm going to be here, but if somebody came to me as a trustee a year from now and said, I'm putting in a residential development here, and I want you to do the same thing that, that you did for Crossroad Holdings. I'd say that was a unique situation, and your situation is nowhere close to that, and I'm not going to entertain that as a, as a design for mm -hmm. and then move forward from there. Okay. So we have a uh, motion on the board. The motion didn't... We can. Where does phase one end? Where does phase one end? Phase one ends right here. So, so phase one includes lots two, three, four, five that come in on Innovation Way. And this dash line okay. is, is phase one. Uh, lots one, one, one A, one B. Are a separate phase. Okay, so if we were just to accept phase one now as designed, it would have just one private gravity line up the you know the first pipe stem, correct? Here. Yes. Potentially. Oh, there. and another gravity line down there. All right. right. So if we just accept. Are we approving phase two today? No. It's Phase one, I call no, I'm just looking no, at the no, agenda. No, we're, they, were, they were approving the entire project. We were asking okay, so phase oh. two. Okay, so phase one is what you just outlined, and phase two is everything else. Phase two is out here. 
I'm sorry, I was looking at two places at once. That's phase two line. Okay. And phase three is essentially the common pressure sewer line. Yeah. All right. Okay. But the agenda says Scarborough Downs phase two. So I was thinking we were pro approving phase two for this. Oh, calling the entire, this whole innovation district phase it's two. In the overall project, it's the second phase. It's the second phase. We <laughs> do the residential. 2A, so, 2B. Okay. So this is, <clears throat> so phase 2A, B, and C, yes? Phase two, sort of phase one of phase two, phase two of phase two, and yeah. phase three of phase two. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, if we say, if we vote, are we approving the whole thing? Yes. As is. Yes. Yes. Good to know. Now, if I can just make a question here. If we amend this motion to accept the gravity sewers as recommended by the superintendent and the pressure sewer in the public road, but the pressure sewers in the private road would be privately owned and maintained. Would that make your project work? We, we would be very happy to, to have that. So I would move that as an, an amendment to the main motion. Okay, and the second, do I have one? Second. Um, okay. So, all in favor of the amendment first. Okay. Oh, so wait a minute. Just, Sorry. I just Any need discussion? an explanation against what we're, I do too. we're actually approving. As, we're, as we're gonna, say it again. We're gonna, we'll be approving. Can you hold up the map there? Sure. We'll be approving everything on that map, which is, which is phase two of their development plan, but it would be phases one, two, two and three two. on that map. But we would not be accepting as public the pressure sewers. Rocky, Thank show you, us the pressure sewers that will remain private. Private. Yeah, those four legs of pressure sewer would remain private. And the other ones have eight inch gravity. Right. Except for the except for the pressure sewer at the very end in the but main that's, road. But that's in the public right in away. Right. And we've right. we've accepted those before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be a, a good compromise. And again, I'd only you know, I, I'm I'm just feeling like this is such a unique project that I understand the design. I don't know why the town wouldn't waive a couple of the features similar to the, what we're being asked to waive, but you know they they probably felt more constrained for precedent and you know planning board rules and procedures to to do that. But but I but I I think it's a reasonable outcome for this particular project, and I would not look at it as something that would be binding on the board looking at future projects because nobody else is coming back to us with 400 acres developed in partnership with the town to make this happen. So I think it's a I think it's a I think it's a concession <coughs> that I would be willing to make on a one time basis, but I don't think I would feel obligated to a future developer to have them count on the same thing happening when they come before us. Do we set a precedent for this development for future phases to do similar situations? I think that's up to the board to decide if and when that happens. So the superintendent made the recommendation originally, but without the sewers, did you make it with the with, with them all with to them. approve everything as proposed? As proposed, were you going to be able to in the future when people come in and point out that we're not going to accept these private ways? It's not the rule. Yeah, um, for the pressure sewer. No, well, in general, an eight inch. If they come in with an eight inch sewer sewer line on a Private fifty foot right, that's not, that's not an issue. So I can, I can okay. I mean, we've had this discussion right along up front with uh, crossroads, 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 yeah. crossroads. So, thank you. <laughs> so the only other thing is, I, I like to make sure everybody's on board here. So it's like if we're all going to most of our votes are. Uh, you know, seven, pretty, pretty seven zero. <laughs> so I, I want to make sure everybody's on board before we. Judith, are you okay with this? Um, not a hundred percent, but I can go along with it. I'm not a hundred percent there, no, no, but I don't have to be. Ben, are you okay with this? I'm okay with it, as long as we can hold it to this is the only situation, or they have to be a similar situation to this for us to approve something like this again. 
and we're not going to accept the um, E1 pump force mains or pump stations. In the project. In the project. In the project. In the project. I know how Charlie feels about it. And um, how about you, Jason? Yeah, I, I, in the absence of the four pressure systems, I'm much more comfortable with that. Okay. And Paul, how are you feeling about this? Uh, I, I agree that excluding the uh, pressure sewer and the private road makes it a lot easier to approve. Okay. Good to know. I have one other question. Go ahead. So does this all run through the pump station that's shown on here? Yes. I, I yes. 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 And that's going to be built with the force main? I, we, we, have we got that? Yes. We do have We that? talked about it at the last uh, meeting. The last I meeting. Believe, last and you and there. they resolved that? Yes. Okay. Okay. So. Last meeting, too. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't there. Any more questions, comments on the amendment? All in favor? Okay. On the original motion, as any amended. discussions on that? As, as amended. As amended. Okay. All in favor of the original motion? As None as opposed? Amended. As amended. As amended. Motion carries. Thank you very much. We really Welcome. appreciate it. So um, I did have one thing on this. My plan wasn't stamped. Yours has a stamp on it, but um, I think Dave discovered that while we were talking about it, and he followed up on it. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But okay. we should be getting stamped ones in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> okay. Thank you. It's always a good idea. Cool. All right. That's old business, new business. Hey, Bessie Commons. Two. Uh, um, housing Initiatives of New England Corporation, here, are requesting approval from the Scarborough Sanitary District trustees to connect and discharge to the sewer the sanitary waste from the proposed uh, Bessie Commons 2 that includes 40. One bedroom housing, and senior housing. By a I'm sorry, I can't. Make it. Yeah, I can't. Sorry. <laughs> What's going on over there? Are we all set? Just we're just uh, having a sidebar to eliminate confusion in my mind. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'll begin again. How's that? Thank yeah. you. I appreciate <laughs> that. Bessie Commons two. Um, let's see. Housing initiatives in New England. Um, Corporation, who has a representative here, are requesting approval from the Scarborough Sanitary District uh, trustees to connect and discharge into the sewer the sanitary wastewater from the proposed Bessie Commons 2 that includes 40 one bedroom senior housing uh, units. Now, the proposed sewer work uh, associated with uh, uh, phase 8, but with uh, this project, includes one manhole. 300 linear feet of system sewer service and all infrastructure will be privately owned. I recommend approval with the following conditions. We approve wastewater flows based on the district standard 200 gallons per day per dwelling unit, which equates to 8,000 gallons per day. Any additional homes, dwelling units, or flow in excess of this approved are subject to additional approvals and fees. All approved wastewater flow is subject to the capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is $16.46 per gallon. It's just as monthly based on the ENR. Based on the current uh, ENR, the uh, total capacity reserve fee for the 40 units is $131,680. This fee is due prior to issuance of any of the sewer permits. Uh, all sewer service shall have detectable on their own utility marking tape. Um, and trace a wire as directed. Uh, it, it, it should be uh, CCTV inspected and uh, of the installed sewer, what gets installed. The sewer permit is required and a complete application associated fees made to the district. And finally, record uh, plans professionally surveyed, um, electronic geo reference CAD drawings, stamped PDF of the CAD drawing, and a stamped paper copy be submitted to the district upon completion. Move approval. Second. 
Okay. Questions for the superintendent or for the owner of the project? Yeah. Um, we have four or five plans, and I'm not really seeing a lot of detail on the, the sewer itself. Um, I can see where the sewer is going, but um, I'm not seeing, you know, inverts or, and it, it's almost, I think they're going to be determined. I, the, I have looked at the, the inverts and the slope of the sewer, um, it all was within design. I'm trying to remember, did I not include that sheet? There's no profile sheets in here. There are no profile sheets. Um, but where it is just a sewer service, I, I don't believe they have a profile sheet. So the place I was concerned about was where you're crossing the, what do they call those? The uh, focal points. Um, they seem like you might be around the same elevation as the focal point uh, piping, but I don't like without the profile. You really can't tell. And okay. I can I can I can look deeper into that um, and check check and confirm that if it needs to be modified, I'll make sure it gets modified. Because you're crossing over right there where the pipe connects to the. To the focal point unit to the outlet, that 12 inch uh, storm drain. Which are you? I'm on C3. Oh, sure. So, right in here, you're crossing. Yeah, this is the this is where Um, do you mind introducing yourself as a podium, please? So these are not their final plans? This is in groups to be determined. Hi, my name is Cindy Taylor, and I'm a president of Housing Initiatives. Um, and the corporation that's actually doing this development is um, Bessie School LP. Uh, but to answer your question, you should have gotten the full set of drawings that show exactly where the sewer easement is. Um, the, if you're familiar with the, the existing buildings over there where Bessie Square is and Bessie, the existing Bessie School is, you can see the right of way for the sewer line that runs through our parking lot and runs through Bessie Square property. Uh, we're tying in, I don't know who's controlling that. Uh, I am. So if you, if you move, move it to the left so you can see the back of Bessie Square. We're, we're tying into the sanitary line uh, closer to Bessie Square than uh, to Bessie, Com Bessie Commons. I'm not following. But uh, I think the easiest thing to do here is for me to um, is bring you a plan in the morning that shows you exactly where that ties in. I can show you on this plan if you'd like me to. Yeah, show us. Please. Issue. It was right up there. Yeah, this is this is not the sewer. 
That's it does say sewer on it, though. That's that that S coming out of the building goes to a manhole right by the focal point. And you can see it better on C3, C4. 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 Um, yeah, C4. C4. There. It's kind of busy, but the focal point is very yeah, I see, clear. I see what you're saying. Yeah. We, you have see? A, we have an easement that comes across here. It right, but you see two lots, but up there, yeah. that's the sewer line coming out right there, that lighter line. There's mm -hmm. an S right up here. And what Ben is concerned about is Still this vicinity here. Oh, oh, I see. Is that what you're talking about, Ben? Yeah. yeah. And, it's, and it goes to a manhole that's very close to a focal point. And it goes right, and that sewer line goes right by the focal point. That's what he's concerned. Yeah, I don't think that that's a problem that would get, um, because we can certainly swim by this. This is a very okay. small uh, structure. Uh, it's so it's crazy. Crazy. But you're saying that's it's not so how it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. You're saying it's coming out this way yeah. now? Yeah. Um, yeah. That was my understanding, but I couldn't double check. Yeah, under C3 it says it's not well, there's a lot of underground power yeah, here. Yeah, that, that was yeah. the intention to come down here. Yeah, it's not right. I don't know where that manhole goes, because yeah. I don't see it going anywhere. That's right. So I was just concerned we were going to run into the focus. Let me give you another point tomorrow. Because they're both the same manhole. Sure. Can we, Mr. Chairman, would it make sense to let the superintendent resolve that design? I think issue? it would. I think it would. Um, as long as the superintendent is happy with the way that the revised plan looks. So it sounds like the sewer is going more toward the easement, not toward the driveway. Either way, the, how it's sewered, um, whether it goes in one or the other, uh, is fine. Um, I can just confirm huh? concepts to make sure there are none. Okay. Uh, I, I know I had stepped through this at one point in time, uh, it's been two weeks now, but I don't remember the details of it. Yeah, there's not a lot of details for this that I'm seeing for the uh, sanitary sewer on the front. I mean, C3 is the easier one to see the sewer on, but the front front is easier to see C4. on C4. Yeah. So, there's the focal point, there's the structure, and the sewer line goes right by it. So, yeah, so are you okay? You're the one that found it. Are you yep. okay with the I'm and confused by, by it being said that it's going somewhere else because that's not shown somewhere else. In the yeah, place. no, I think I'm, I think that, that was my error that I have an easement across it. I looked at it earlier tonight, but I think that the, um, the sewer line is, um, shown where you, where you looked at it, yes. where it is. And it runs down the, the right of way of the, the public street. On the other side from the power. And the runs power into power. a deeper uh, manhole yes. at the base okay. that crosses over that you can see right there at the bottom so above the label. Right here. Yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, the that's an existing sewer manhole. Right. Services. So what we're just concerned about is the service that come from the building yeah. out to the first manhole. If that were adjusted to reduce the conflict. Or, if there is, or re remove the conflict. There was, yeah, I John don't pointed out that on sheet C3, it, it, there was a note there to do a test pit to determine that elevation, but I guess it hasn't been done yet. So. Okay. And I hate to wait to, when you're installing it to do the test pit and then try to figure out where to put the pipe. <clears throat> so. That works for me. You okay I'm, with that? Well, I'm okay with Dave taking the responsibility to straight, you know, to uh, figure out what, how that should go in there. Cool. Yeah, I'll I'll be happy to meet with you on that tomorrow, Dave, if you have time. Get uh, sight lines with it to come down. All right. Any more questions for Cindy before she leaves the podium? No. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Related question. Yes. Do do uh, the folks? I notice there's a lack of like garage space or covered space. Is that? typically a problem for the folks who live in these units to in the wintertime to get their cars in and out and 
It doesn't have anything to do with our business. It's just a personal curiosity yeah. that I have. Oh, we have a system where we have somebody go out and clean off the cars, and they they move their cars. Uh, we have a designated time when people have to have their car moved, yeah. and then they bring it back and park it. Okay. So that two hours after a storm has yeah. reached its peak. Well, as one who's who's leaving Maine winters, and I've always had a garage. <laughs> and garage. You know, <laughs> That's a luxury a for affordable housing. Like yeah. Really. <laughs> okay. I guess you. That's an so we try to service them. Affordable as well. being the key operator. Yeah, guess. and we we try to service those folks. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, snow removal notwithstanding. Any more questions, comments? All in favor of the motion? None opposed. All right. Thank you, Cindy. A V Technic LLC. On behalf of the Technic LLC, St. Clair Associates, we request the district approval to connect and discharge into the sewer the wastewater from a proposed 24,420 square foot office slash warehouse as outlined below. Uh, about 5,600 square feet of it will be office, uh, 16,500 uh, warehouse, and another 2,000 dock space. Um, the sewer will be connected into the proposed public sewer that will be constructed within the uh, public right away as we had um, uh, discussed and that is that first leg and includes a sampling manhole. Um, I recommend approval with the following conditions. The requested wastewater flow is uh, the 160, 160 gallons per day based on the district's minimum allocation. Uh, the, the, there would be no, as a result of the, um, uh, the approval in old business uh, with regards to uh, phase two of phase, Scarborough Downs. Phase two of Scarborough Downs, thank you. There would be no capacity reserve fee. The 160 gallons per day is the minimum that they would be purchasing per lot. Uh, all sewer services shall have a detectable underground utility marking tape and uh, tracer wire. Uh, provide final plans to the superintendent for approval by the permits. Sewer permit is required and complete application and associated fee shall be submitted and, uh, and executed and, uh, and all fees paid prior to any sewer work. Uh, this approval is subject to completion of and acceptance of the sewer system within the innovation district. Um, and uh, this approval is also subject to district acceptance of the eight inch sewer main within the private shared access. Uh, and the, um, uh, and finally, uh, record plans, professionally surveyed electronic geo reference, CAD drawing, stamp, CAD drawing, and stamp paper copy be provided to the district. Motion to approve. Second. With the with the conditions outlined by the superintendent. With the conditions as outlined by the superintendent. Thank you. All right. Questions, comments. All right, none. All in favor. Oh, can we say I just want to make oh. sure I didn't write some notes in here somewhere. <coughs> All right. All in favor? <laughs> now, none opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Two eighty nine Payne Road. Uh, Sebago Technics has requested district approval to connect the discharge into the sewer and the wastewater from a closed uh, 4,450 <coughs> square foot uh, retail space. Monitoring manhole will be provided. Uh, I recommend approval with the following conditions. Uh, the flow is a limit, uh, the requested flow is limited to 2695 gallons per day, or 2695 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste. Capacity reserve fee is calculated based on the 2695 gallons per day, and based on the 1646 capacity reserve fee, 1646 uh, per gallon per day. So the total cost is uh, $44,359.70, and that fee is due prior to issuance of any sewer permits. 
Detective Officer Mark, <coughs> Mark, Mark and Kate and Teresa Wise shall be installed as uh, part of the district. The final plan shall be submitted to the superintendent prior to issuance of the permits. So a permit is required. That application and fees be uh, executed and submitted to the district prior to any work. And then finally, the record drawing to be provided in accordance to district standards. Um, okay, go ahead. I, have, I just said. Want to make a motion first? Yes, you may. I'm, I'm sorry. So make make a motion to approve with the conditions as outlined by the superintendent. Second. Now, questions, comments? Question and comment. Go ahead, John. Where on Payne Road is this? This is um, one lot up from. Section with Haggis Parkway going towards um, if you're coming off Haggis Parkway, you take a right. So it's heading up towards RC Moore. Correct. Okay. So I guess I would think that we ought to remind Sebago Technics that they should include location maps in their in their submittals to us. And I also question why they're submitting drawings to us that don't have any kind of engineer's stamp. It's, I, I uh, think that Ben picked up on that and commented on that. And I just think that's a, that. yeah. I just think that it's a mistake to be receiving plans from these engineering companies that aren't far enough along so that they dare to put their own seal on the plans. And I think I think. Main law requires plans that are submitted to public agencies to bear the stamp and seals of the designers, and I just think we should insist that that be done. Mm -hmm. I, I usually do. Uh, I apologize for missing that. Um, well, I just think you should go back to them, tell them the board doesn't intend to continue accepting progress mm -hmm. prints from them that are so that are so preliminary that. Uh, yeah. They don't put their own stamp on it. There is a um, typo in the sanitary sewer structure table. The existing manhole rim is different, is shown different on the plan than it is in that table. On the existing? Okay. Yeah, the existing's out in Payne Road, and you can see it has the rim elevation. Any other questions, comments? Um, I plan not to vote for this one until I see a stamp drawing, because I think that will send a message to our folks presenting to us. That's well, what I, I'm thinking. I I'm th doing it personally. I'm not advocating <laughs> to do that. Well, I was board. thinking of doing the same thing, but I think we ought to set that as, as a standard first, because we have in the past. I think the last meeting I was at in September, October, no, August, we, we accepted plans that weren't stamped and approved those. So we ought to decide right now that from now on we're not going to. I would agree. I think that's the thing to do is just not accept them as if they're not stamped. That means that, you know, first of all, not showing them, showing that they're not taking us for granted, that they're not finishing the project, you know, or putting it far enough along. And they say, oh, yeah, we'll just get sewer approval and move forward. Yeah, and it just causes problems for us it does. And on our end because we you know, they're not complete. Dave, do you have any I, I thoughts on that? No, um, the only comment I have on it is I, I usually do try to confirm the stamp. It got a little hectic when we guys put the package together with the storm. <laughs> yeah. And I missed it. I mean, just, when I pulled the back together, I just missed it. That's, that's my own site. So, I apologize. Um, I mean, I think, unless it's changed, I thought main law required engineers to put their stamp on any plan submitted to public, to public agencies. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the superintendent should probably send some kind of a, a letter to those uh, engineering firms, at least in the Greater Portland area, that that repeatedly submit plans to us and put them 
put them on notice that, you know, that's a requirement that the board expects to see complied with in the future, and if they don't, he'll be returning plans to them for, you know, further, further design until they get it to a point where they can justify putting their seal on it. I just don't think we should be getting plans that aren't mm -hmm. that far along. And uh, if they want to sub submit concept plans, we can give them conceptual approvals. Mm -hmm. um, but not final approvals until we have a plan with a seal on it. I think that's a good point, Ben. You want to start that tonight or going forward? That I'm leaving up to you, but I'm still not voting for this thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Start poll, is anyone else voting for it? Yeah, who's, what do you think, Ben? I mean, Jason, you're back. Uh, yeah, I, other than the fact that we have done it before, um, I think uh, at least my position is that uh, Dave set a precedence via email or a registered letter of some sort to some of the firms that are we most commonly work with that we will no longer be approving plans. Well, the, the other thing that we could amend the uh, approval to the approval will not be issued until we receive a stamp drive. An option as well on this one, but we yeah. but in the future ones we shouldn't even look at them until they, they have the stand. We shouldn't be reviewing them without the stand. Yep. I well, think that's being fair. an old softy. I'll vote. I'll vote to approve this um, based on the precedent that we said in September, I guess, or August. But uh, I don't remember that one. But but yeah. one one mistake doesn't necessarily obligate us to continue making that's that right. making that same error. But. Just to be, just to be, as as somebody I respect greatly used to say, consistency is the hobgoblin of small minds. Um, okay, and and I think that was originally a Winston Churchill quote, but uh, but he's not the one I heard it from. No. But at any rate, <laughs> I, I'll go along with approving this on the assumption that the superintendent is going to get a, a signed, okay, so. signed drawing. So we'll see how the vote comes out. It'll be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Any more comments, Paul? I would agree wholeheartedly with the sentiment that, that the, the plan should be stamped. Um, I think if we have a motion to amend, do we need a motion to amend? Do we need another to, motion to amend what? Depends to, what you want to say. To, to amend uh, the superintendent's recommendation to include that a stamp. That would be my guess to make that amended motion. Go ahead, you can move it. May I move to uh, make that motion, please, that the uh, superintendent's recommendations um, uh, be amended to include a stamp plan. Okay. Second. Any discussion on the amended motion? Voting on the amendment. Okay, so let's vote on the amendment. All in favor? One opposed. <laughs> I'm being contrary. <clears throat> All right, on the original motion on this project, any more discussion? All in favor? As One opposed. As amended. As amended. As amended. As amended. Sorry. All right, Route 114 Force Main Engineering Agreement. Route 114. Yep. Uh, I met with my Shara Public Works and they have accelerated the work on Route 114 from Maple Lab to Nunsuch River. That is the area of um, uh, Route 114 that we have had five force main breaks within. Uh, with that, I also think it is prudent for the district to accelerate the replacement of the force main in this area. I had it in our capital plan to be replaced in 2021, actually. Uh, consequently, I met with Andrew Johnson from Atlantic Resource Consultants to discuss getting a proposal from them to design, bid, and provide a part-time construction oversight for this work. Atlantic Resource Consultants are uh, um, uh, currently working with the town on the design of the road improvements and are in good position to proceed immediately with this work. Uh, to ensure completing the design for a spring bid, they would like to proceed with a uh, preliminary design immediately. Uh, we could utilize monies already budgeted for pump station one design, which will not be completed this year as had been anticipated. 
I recommend authorizing the superintendent to execute the engineering agreement with Atlantic Resource uh, Consultants pending our uh, um, legal counsel review. Um, I just got a uh, contract from them the other day. I did include it in the electronic copy of the packet they sent out. Uh, it was not a part of this packet because I didn't have it at that time. The amount for the design um, and uh, it's, um, uh, I believe it was just uh, not quite $23,000. Would they do the inspection as well? Or? They would do provide part-time inspection. But that's a different figure. What's that? That's an additional cost. Uh, no, that includes that cost. Oh, includes inspection. Yeah. Inspection and design. What is the cost? Twenty-three thousand. How much? He he okay, just received it. He said. Yeah, it's not in this document. It's in the, our electronic version that he emailed yesterday. Yeah. But it's not on our paper. Which I looked at quickly, but I didn't pick that up. Um, May I ask a question for my own edification here? Yes. Was Atlantic Resource Consultants uh, responsible for the disaster that's occurred up there, <laughs> in my mind? Uh, uh, the previous road of improvements? No. No. Okay. That was a different <laughs> firm. Oh, so the town changed designers? Yes. Do we know if Atlantic Resource Consultants has done much in the way of major sewer projects? Uh, Storm sewer project. They've done a lot. Yeah. They've done a lot of road work. Yes. Um, in the, in this yeah. this type of uh, condition, including the, uh, including sewer design. Yes. I've worked with them a number of times, Andrew. And, and Andrew uh, Johnston is who yeah. I know of. He's very thorough, actually. Yeah. There, there is. Um, should we have a motion on the floor before that? we continue this? Yeah, we probably should. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That would be nice. Twenty-two thousand five hundred dollars, and that does. Um, that includes inspection. Uh, no, it goes up to bid. bid okay. Base. All right. So inspection services will come later in a different proposal. Yeah. Okay. Do I have a motion on the floor? I, I mean, what did you just say? Something's going to come later. Inspection the, the service. Inspection oh, it's not part of this. Yeah, it's not no. part of this. Okay. It seemed like a low number. Yeah. Okay. Move approval as recommended by the superintendent. Second. All right, now we're going to have a discussion. Any questions, Charlie? Um, the money that we're going to use to do this work was budgeted for Pump Station 1 design? Yes. I don't remember how much money that was. It was $70,000. OK. And do we know, in your mind, do you have sort of a gut figure as to what it's going to cost us to do this work? Uh, my overall, my gut feeling is this is a three-quarter of a million dollar project. And we're going to fund that out of where? That would be fixed assets. Yes, Ben. Where does the actual, is it, do we start at the pump station and go to Maple? Is that where we end up? We're going to, uh, the discussions that I had uh, with, uh, and we, we went out a lot around to various options. But where we're thinking right now is from Maple down to just short of the, uh, the river crossing there. Um, what is happening with the river crossing, we don't know. That's, that's going to be another phase of the project. And so we might as well wait and see what happens there and want to you know, work with that at that time. What, what, is, what are we looking at for? For the road cross, uh, the river crossing, I'm not. I don't know at this point. No, but is the town doing something as well? For right now, no. They're stopping short of it. Okay. Their project would be stopping short of that. So the force main would only be replaced within the town's project limits, which are from Maple 
down short of the crossing Correct. of the river. What about our force main beyond Maple Torn Oak Hill? Leaving it as is. How many more feet is that? That's probably another 4,000 feet, 3,000. Maple to Route 1. But we haven't had the instances of all our force breaks, main breaks in that area. All no. our breaks have been between Maple and the and river. river. Okay, so uh, this is the problem area yeah, right now. Yeah, this is the problem area. Uh, and when we did the uh, culvert work on Route 114 between Maple and Route 1, uh, and we cut out that um, that section of force main to, to allow placement of the new culverts, uh, I took that opportunity to inspect that pipe, and that pipe looked like it went in the ground yesterday. Okay. Good to know. Any more questions, comments? I would just point out that uh, our current fixed asset investment account is at just under $1.4 million. Um, it probably should be it probably should be somewhere in the vicinity of twelve to fourteen million dollars. And after this project, our fixed asset investment account will be six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And I guess we could add to that the four hundred and fifty thousand that we're supposed to be paying into it out of this current budget year. So I'm hoping I'm hoping the one point four million balance doesn't already include the 450000 that we had budgeted to be deposited into this reserve account. Um, where will we stand right now? Yes. Have we transferred any money into it? We have not. No. Okay. So Would it be more prudent maybe to bond this job with this around? I don't think so. Um, but maybe. I, I, I guess I just really want to point out that that we not only have we been underfunding our fixed asset investment account in order to hold rates down, but we've actually been borrowing from it to stabilize our rates. And that's a big part of the reason why on the 21st we'll be holding a hearing to raise our rates, because it's really imperative that that fund be raised. I just read an article in the Portland newspaper about the failing water system infrastructure and the lack of funds for that. And you know, we have been going since 1984 without federal investment in our system. We've been funding everything based on fees paid by our ratepayers, and I think we'd be foolhardy, as we've already experienced, looking for additional funds from the state or the federal government to help us to think that in the, in the future that we'll be able to maintain our system based on some grants or some loans or something from the federal government. So it's really imperative that that fixed asset investment account grow dramatically so that these types of things can be done. When we go to bond issue, we have to get the approval of, our, of the voters to do that. Mm -hmm. And we could be running up against the town's need to build schools and asking people to give us $3 million for a sewer project that we should have had the money in the bank to deal with. So I'm just making that case in support of the public hearing matter that's coming up on the 21st. I won't be here for that, but I'm just highlighting that for any viewers that are out there, for the ratepayers who may be wondering why we're looking for a rate increase, mm -hmm. and uh, for the benefit of the trustees to know where I stand on the issue. So thanks for letting me get on the soapbox for a minute. Cool. We appreciate you on the soapbox. <laughs> we might have to name the next meeting after you. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Maybe the force main after Charlie. That's a good idea too. So, um, <laughs> all in favor of this project of the contract? Yes. Approving the contract. Yes. Not opposed. Budget summary. Uh, the nine-month nine budget summary is including your packet. I recommend approval. Move approval. Second. Questions, comments. All in favor? Opposed. All right. The moment we've all been waiting for public comments. Rocky <laughs> Risperra, 287 Black Point Road.
I want to thank the trustees for working with the Downs team tonight. Uh, it, it's a pretty important uh, project for us and for the town, and we appreciate your cooperation. But I really stuck around because I saw those cake over there. And uh, <laughs> I want to congratulate Charlie and really thank him for his service. Uh, Charlie's done more for the town of Scarborough than most people will ever know. And uh, he's been an inf influence in my life and uh, a mentor. He maybe doesn't know that, but... Uh, He's a good man. He's done a lot for the town, and uh, I just wanted to say that the Risbera family appreciates uh, all his service to the town. So thank you. Thanks, Rick. Cool. Cool. Uh, thank you, Rocky. Uh, trustee comments, and I'm going to go out of order. I think I'll let Charlie speak first. Gee, thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> um, want to uh, again give credit to our staff and express our appreciation, at least mine, uh, for all the diligent work that they do um, to get us repeated glowing reports from our uh, regulators at the main DEP. I thought that monthly report with the photos uh, was a great demonstration of um, the work that they do on a daily basis to keep the, keep the facilities um, in service 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They do an excellent job. They're knowledgeable, hardworking, and dedicated, and the superintendent sets a great tone working with them. So I just want to say thanks, appreciate it. Can I, can I speak to that one second? Interrupt me. Um, the, that inspection, I happened to call Matt Height for other reasons, and he commented, he said, I, you know, I haven't been down there in a long while. Can I come down tomorrow? And I said, sure. And so that is a, absolutely no preparation of the facilities for his inspection. That was the very next day of when we had the conversation. Mm -hmm. So those photos that you saw are in there are what the place looks like on a daily basis. Yeah. And I think most of the trustees know that. And, uh, and I just wanted to say, um, that I've been involved with the sanitary district in some capacity for about 40 years running now, from my time as a planner and engineer in Scarborough to my time as a superintendent. And the key for the outstanding performance of the district has always been the employees and uh, their knowledge, their commitment and dedication, and the support that we've had, you know, also from, from our, our users and uh, and the cooperation with, with our contractors. So um, this is my last meeting uh, after all these years, and uh, I'll be spending winters in warmer weather, and I will be returning to Maine for spring and summer uh, seasons. I just, just made all that work out this week, as a matter of fact. So I'm happy to say I'll be around, but I won't be sitting on this board. But uh, I will come back from time to time and say hi, and I'll stop into the plant and see Dave while he's there. Um, but it's been an honor and a privilege to serve on the district and with all the great trustees um, who've had the interests of the town of Scarborough and the Scarborough Sanitary District as the number one priority over all these years. And this board, um, I think, reflects those same concerns. So it's been a pleasure to serve with everybody here, to work with former boards of trustees and individual trustees and with the town. So, um, you know, I'm walking away proud of what the district is and has been and look forward to it maintaining that stature uh, in the future. And I wish you all well and thank you all very much for just a minute to express my appreciation and hopes that the district will continue on really sound footing in the future. Cool. cool. Um, because uh, you are leaving the board, I'm going to read the plaque that we're giving you into the record. Um, again, I'm going a little out of order and off script, but Charles Anders J. Anderson in recognition and appreciation for 20 years of outstanding and dedicated service as a Scarborough Sanitary District trustee. We appreciate you, Charlie, and I just want to give you this. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, ben. So, uh, Dave, thank Dave again for the staff and the excellent inspection and 
and all that you do down at the plant, and then making it through that storm. I, I think I lost my power for a day and a half. It was tough. I mean, it's tough to go without power. And the plant was going without power for, probably had power, but without supplied power from CMP. For uh, 48 hours, more, more, more than 48 hours. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, for Charlie, I, I, I didn't sit down and write something up, but I was thinking about it. Uh, you, you know, you've been on here for so long, and you've always just like E.F. Hutton, whenever Charlie talks, everybody's playing, and everything, <laughs> everything stops, and everybody's listening. And I think over the years, you've saved our butts a number of times. <laughs> uh, I wasn't on the board when you were superintendent, but I, you know, you kind of set the, the ball in motion for, for the budgets and, and the way we operate, and we kind of continued on from your, your, uh, your direction. From the start, so we're going to miss you here. I, I think we're going to, in future uh, discussions with contractors, we're going, to, <laughs> we're going to miss you. It's going to be nice to be missed, but I think in a year you'll forget all about it. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think so. Julie, I want to wish Charlie well in this next chapter of your life, okay. not the last, the next, I hope so. the next. I hope it's the next. And <laughs> you are going to be missed in that history, all of that history that you have. You can't replace it. It's impossible to replace, and that's going to be hard. So we will miss you, and you will come back and visit us for sure. Yes, I will. And I will see you in the villages. I hope so. I know where to find you. <laughs> you just go to that big public office and find everybody that yeah. lives there. So good luck in the villages. You're going to love you. it. Thank you. You are welcome. Paul. Absolutely uh, going to miss uh, going to miss you, Charlie, and um, hopefully we'll see you in the public and maybe we can leave some extra time for public comments <laughs> uh, going forward. But uh, big shoes to fill for sure and uh, good luck um, and enjoy. Um, and also definitely uh, tip of the cap, uh, it was a, a bad storm and um, a lot goes into keeping the system running in addition to what everyone else is dealing with on a personal level. So hats off to the staff for doing a great job getting through. Cool. Thanks. Jason. Yeah, fantastic job by the staff. I, I, I know I saw Phil several times and probably others up and down Clay Pitts Road during the storm and uh, during the power outage. So I know uh, there was probably others than just Phil, but everybody doing a great job keeping the system up and running, keeping the operations going, and uh, keeping our rate payers, luckily, with service. So fantastic job, everyone there. And, of course, with the uh, inspection as well. Thank you to everybody. Uh, Charlie, uh, lots of things to say, obviously. I was just sitting here reflecting, my gosh, I've been here 11 years now. Uh, and it's frightening that it's been that long, kind of. But uh, Charlie was one of the people, he and Bud Waldron, when I started 11 years ago, when I had questions, they were the people to go to and uh, were mentors. And uh, you will be sorely missed by the board and also the citizens of Scarborough and me for one, certainly. So really appreciate all your contributions. It's been great for our town, great for the district, and uh, we will miss you. Thank you, Jason. All right. Um, 20 years as a district trustee, 20 years as district superintendent, setting the standard. Um, you're a great person, Charlie. You taught me a lot. Um, we appreciate your wisdom the history, and we'll miss both, and we'll miss you. Thanks for your service. Thank you. Okay. Yes, go ahead. I want to thank Charlie for all that he's done for me and um, over the years, and he's, again, he's also you're, been a great mentor, and the, the knowledge that you've uh, provided me with with regards to the district has been huge, and I want to thank you. Your, your, your insight is going to be I think the district's in good hands with you, Dave. Cool. With that, I'll entertain the final motion. Maybe Charlie can make that as his final motion. I move we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Done. Thank you.